going to be checking out some cool science experiments that will probably blow your mind. Will a cup of water boil using boiling water? What the heck? Yeah, of course. If a cup of water is floating in a pot of water and I turn the stove on high, when will the water in the cup start to boil? Before the surrounding water? After the surrounding water? They will start boiling at the same time or will the water in the cup never boil? Hmm, I'm going to say... I would say they would start boiling simultaneously? I would say after because the cup still needs to heat up. Yeah, but it's so thin. It's just glass. It's like a microwave, right? If you guessed that it boils after the surroundings, you'd unfortunately be wrong. Oh! What? That's right. Actually, never will boil. What? Why? How? Explain. Because the surrounding water cannot be higher than 100 degrees Celsius, and the water needs additional heat after reaching its boiling point in order to turn into a gas. That's the theoretical answer, but is it true in a real-world demo? Well, this is far from a perfectly scientific experiment, but yes, even after 20 minutes, the water inside the cup was not boiling. Really? Hmm. Science, man. Is distilled water magnetic? No, how can water be magnetic? Some people said it was stuff in my tap water, not the water itself. So to test that claim, I wanted to see if it worked with distilled water. Other people claim that it's the ions in the water, not the water molecule itself. But from my research, I'm not convinced that's true. However, I'm honestly not confident about my understanding of it at all. So I'm hoping you'll tag someone in the comments who would know, like Hank Green. Anyway, I tried it with distilled water and it still is weakly repelled by- How is water magnetic? That doesn't make any sense sense. Is it like, does not how compasses work on water? A compass is not made out of water. But there are compasses that you can use on water. What? That doesn't... What's inside water then? Is it... Is, is water even healthy to drink now? I don't think so. I'm never touching water ever again. Loudspeaker and candle show sound waves? Wait, candles can, like, show sound? Here's a cool way to visualize sound waves. Remember, sound is nothing more than a pressure wave that propagates through molecules to your ear. You can't usually see this in real life, but with the help of of a candle you sure can't oh you you can see sound just take enough pre-workout i trust you can <laughs> enough cool. caffeine you see everything oh my god is it it's just gonna start dancing right Yo! Oh, oh, look at that hey. flame go! Those pressure hey. waves cause the movement of the candle that you see here, and it looks pretty epic in slow motion. This is the same force that's being exerted on your ear when you listen to music super loudly, so hopefully you can see why loud music can damage your ears. Nah, I have everything at max 100. You know, sometimes my phone tells me, hey, your volume is too high, ear damage. No, I go all the way. I want my whole mind to drain out. How to get a potato off the end of a knife. <laughs> you just take it off. All right, so a lot of you were asking how I get my potatoes off the end of my knives, and there's really only one correct answer. So many people think, oh, just whack the shoe, and it seems like that would work, but it doesn't. See? The knife what? has a hard time accelerating. Just the use the potato! Just use your hand! Like, just use your hand! Why are you stabbing it deeper? I went a little crazy last video, so here's a more steady view, and you can see with each whack, it just digs deeper and deeper into the potato. So if whacking it doesn't work, then what do I do? Use your hand! Well, I usually accelerate them both downward, then abruptly stop the knife, and the inertia of the potato keeps it going. That's what I do. I was about to cut this potato, but let me just emit more inertia while going down and thinking sciency when I'm making my potato salad. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> I would to charge your phone in the wilderness? No, that's not possible. Imagine you wake up stranded in the middle of nowhere and your phone is dangerously low on battery. Here's what you should do. First, quickly survey your surroundings and pick up any tools you can get your hands on. Use oh, those tools for the best. Hammer. <laughs> Why would there be a freaking hammer in the ground? <laughs> what? Of your ability to mine out some aluminum. Next, you need mine out aluminum. <laughs> what are you talking about? What do you think I spawned? This is not Minecraft to find an abandoned car charger. This is often the most difficult part, but you can sometimes find them on the branches of trees. On these, the negative terminal is on the sides and the positive terminal is on top. You're right. going to use the aluminum to shape a sleeve around this the negative guy's terminal joking. to bring the two terminals closer together. Press the aluminum foil to make it fit. Then you can wait for the 9 volt batteries to spawn in and grab one. After <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Okay. everything set, and you can connect the batteries. Be prepared joking. to sit for a while though, because this will not be quick. Let me just grow some AA batteries real quick from my tree in the back. <laughs> All right, now we're checking out a ping pong ball water rocket. If you fill up a tub that has a ping pong ball in it and drop it on the floor, the ping pong ball probably shoots way higher than you're expecting. Why would you? 
you fill it with water. Those are kind of cool though. Yes, this is real and even works when the drop isn't perfect. Let's test it out with different amounts of water. With the tub about as full as I'm willing to spill on my kitchen floor, the ping pong ball still shoots a screen as high as seen in this slow motion. Ah, uh, yes, let's do this right next to the electric socket. That sounds like a <laughs> great a idea. idea. <laughs> next, we'll be testing out very little water. It still worked, although it wasn't a perfect drop, but I will say it definitely shot out with less speed than before. Wait, so water makes the ping pong ball go higher? It made it go bounce. Why don't you just bounce it off the ground? Popcorn kernel lava lamp. That would actually be kind of cool. I want to see this. Popcorn sinks in air, oil, and water. That's what about cool. sparkling water? Pause oh. now to make your prediction. Hmm. Since you asked me, I'm assuming no, it won't sink. When the kernels first enter the sparkling water, most of them sink, but then oh. as the bubbles form around it, they float oh. to the top. You might think that's the end of the experiment, but then those bubbles escape through the surface and cause the kernels to sink again. Enjoy your beautiful popcorn kernel lava lamp. That's kind of cool. Really, really cheap lava lamp. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Bending water with a comb. With a comb? Like what you put in your hair? What are you, a water bender? If you rub a comb on your hair a lot- Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. It bend it. And get it to be statically charged enough to attract the water and make it look like it bends. I can be a water bender. So are you telling me if I attach like magnets to my hand, I could like send out like water bombs at you like hydro bomb. If you want to be a water bender, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. We're trying to beat Will Smith and subscribers. Glowing drink beverage. I don't think you should drink it if it glows, man. I'll admit it. This beverage looks pretty sketch to drink. Yes, that is I literally a shoe potion. Not any tonic water, but specifically ones with quinine in it. The presence of this ingredient makes it glow under black light. This is the same as the highlighter ink that I showed you before, although obviously don't you drink that. You shouldn't drink that. Anyway, since this is just tonic water, it might be a cool thing to add if you ever have a party with black light. Although don't put black light in the bathroom unless you want to scare your guests. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. If I drink uranium, would I become Hulk? Let's test it. Fact or cap? Fastest way to empty a bottle of water, just dump it, duh. Let's do time trials for three different ways to empty this bottle. The first way is to do absolutely nothing special and just okay. flip it upside down. As you can see, this is really slow because the air bubbles have to go. What do you mean slow? That's like the fastest way you can do it. Leaving, and these oh, I just squeezed the bottle the and it's out instantly. By the time the bottle was completely empty in this method, it was around uh, 15 and a half seconds. 15 the second seconds? Strategy is That's a pretty good speed run. Oh, now it's the Blaza strategy. Just to swing the bottle oh. around to create a vortex. As you can see, this creates a channel of air Whoa! that helps relieve the pressure and improve the time. This method was almost twice as fast as the first one at around eight and a half seconds. That was pretty cool. People do that with like beer cans so they chug it faster. Lastly, the pro strategy, which is to use a straw, unblock the hole right as you release it. The straw provides a passageway to relieve the pressure and it results in the fastest time. Ah, oh, yes. Let me just take out my handy straw. <laughs> I keep it stored. You don't want to know where. How to clink your friend's bottle to make it foam over. Okay, that's interesting. Here's a quick way to lose friends. Give him a cheers from above and watch <laughs> the over. Oh, I've done that. It works. I want to do that. That's funny. If you guys enjoyed that, make sure to go subscribe to that guy's TikTok. I don't know. We'll just link all the socials down below. But if you enjoyed our reaction, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. We're trying to be Will Smith and subscribers. Pow!